everyone, and welcome back to episode four of Excellence with Ebony. I am very, very happy to introduce to you today Vanessa Kisawele. She is here as the co-founder and executive director of an organization called She Found. And I was especially excited to talk to her today because she is a female-owned business and she supports other female entrepreneurs and females that would like to get into um, starting their own businesses. So today I wanted to share with you, Vanessa, and let her give you some insight as to what she does, her organization, how she got started, and all the wonderful things that go along with being a female entrepreneur. So I would like to take this moment to say welcome, Vanessa, to episode four of Excellence of Ebony. Thank you so much for joining us. And I'm going to let you take the floor and introduce yourself. Thank you so much, um, and thank you for having me. So um, I'm Vanessa. Uh, I have many things, <laughs> but most important, most important, uh, I am an entrepreneur. I'm fascinated by tech, um, and uh, really much interested as of late with the creative industry. So I'll start from there. And um, one thing that has really been sort of um, constant with me is business. So I'm really at that place where I'm, um, I'm trying to connect all of this in one place. Um, so as you said, I'm here as a, an executive director of She Found. Um, she Found is a nonprofit organization uh, supporting female entrepreneurs and female-led businesses in Tanzania. And hopefully we're looking to go wider to different emerging markets. And one of the reasons why we, we really um, saw it's important with this, it's the experience I have personally had, but uh, basically um, all of us who are part of She Found thought it's, it's important. And when you even look at the statistics, um, literally the, the African co community or continent, including Tanzania, is being driven by women-led businesses, which most of them are small businesses or small and medium businesses. Um, but basically from my, my point of view, I have had experience working with women um, in technology and women in business for about five to six years now. And uh, being a woman myself who is into, into, into entrepreneurship, I've had several startups. Some have survived, some have, had, <laughs> have been a total failure. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I've also had the opportunity to be in the innovation and, and entrepreneurship ecosystem here in, in Tanzania for quite some time now. Um, I started in as a startup myself, being exposed to innovation spaces and opportunities that there are. Um, and being that I'm from a tech background professional wise, like what I started, um, it, was, it has always been fascinating to see the, the participation of women uh, from where I started in terms of tech, like in a class of um, 21 guys, we had only two women who were taking uh, the course I was taking, and one of them unfortunately dropped out before. Uh, so it was it, it has been a roller coaster, and within the innovation ecosystem, we see the vibrance, um, we see the startups coming up, we see the opportunity uh, within the entrepreneurship ecosystem, but seeing very few female-led businesses or female-led startups or female entrepreneurs actually taking on the stage, um, growing their businesses past the, uh, the, the early stage or past that value of death has been quite a challenge. Now, um, I joined uh, one of the companies that I also work with, it's called Sahar Ventures. I believe you hosted Jumande. Um, I joined in 2018 as a, as a lead of one of the subsidiary companies, Sahara Sparks. And what I found out was the same thing, fascinating. My eye will always catch that women aspect, like why are there few women here? 
right? In terms of the startups that we're working with during the event, um, even when we put in a call for startups to actually come and pitch and all that, and I was like, okay, this still doesn't sit right with me. Now, since before then, I had already worked with um, a Swedish organization supporting women getting into tech and in employability, women in college. I've had uh, my own initiative called Girl Next Door, uh, dealing with teenagers in technology um, for personal development and all that. Um, but also as a tech mentor, I was like, okay, this, this, we need to do something about it, about this. So um, I put in a request that I wanted to run a female dedicated uh, version uh, of Sahara during the Sahara Sparks event. And um, it, it, it turned out actually the idea made sense, right? To the management of Sahara Ventures and, and to everybody within the team, um, the lady I was working with by then. Uh, so it was like, okay, great, let's do um, a female dedicated event um, for female in, in innovation technology and entrepreneurship. And that's how it got started. Um, we wanted to start it as, as an event. Okay. And later on, it evolved into a program. So we said had a, um, I had a very amazing support from Sahara Ventures. Uh, most of the team members in Sahara, that thing just made sense because it's something that um, resonates with if we're building uh, the innovation ecosystem it just doesn't make sense if some of the people within the ecosystem are not involved. So it made sense to actually support something that um, brings in inclusivity and, and a sort of a new, you know, a new um, taste of things on ground. Um, so, yeah, so we had a couple um, of people within the team, mostly the ladies, <laughs> as I mentioned, I must say, I give them a big, <laughs> a big shout out. To, and we turned it into a full fledged program um, that matured from dealing with the women that had ideas to then those who already had businesses, which we called the blooms, like they were blooming. And then we had the, the event now, the Female Founders Marketplace, to showcase those women. And in our surprise, it, 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 it made sense and it had more impact than we, we thought of. Um, we could see the excitement. We could see uh, most women now engaging in, in like, wow, I didn't know this, this existed. I didn't know I could raise funds in this other way. Okay, these are the things I didn't know I needed to actually put my business in a more stable situation. Okay, um, I'm experiencing issues with funding and team building and stuff like that. So we started realizing what actually are the issues that are preventing these women to be inclusive within the entrepreneurial ecosystem, right? Um, and so after that, um, I've been working on it like a part-time project um, for quite, for about two years, which last year we formally, like formally, formally now registered it. And we registered it as a non-profit. So now it's a full-fledged entity um, that we're fully supporting women entrepreneurs. And as of to now, to this year, we've already worked with about 200 plus women, um, are reaching out to about 1,000 plus women entrepreneurs through the resource centers that we have uh, from She Found Business Hub to the WhatsApp groups to the database that we have. We send them materials assignments and, and stuff like that so it has been quite a fascinating journey given that uh, I love working with this woman because I I feel like uh, the world has this uh, this secret potential inside of them and the world is is not just utilizing it and if we're going to get anywhere we need to utilize everything that is available for good of course so yes, that's how she found what started. Um, and it has been quite a fascinating journey <laughs> to me personally. Um, yes, well, yeah. that is, uh, I think, absolutely phenomenal. And one of the reasons why I wanted to feature you on one of my episodes is because, you know, when you look at um, women in general, 
um, especially in the African culture or just in the black culture or a lot of a lot of cultures, Indian cultures, Asian cultures. Um, you know, you have seen historically where women are entrepreneurs, they just don't realize it. We have a lot of micro entrepreneurs in the world where you have, you know, mothers and grandmothers that have their little local shops on the side of the road. They have their little stores, you know, they have things that they sell mainly for survival or support of their family. And historically, women have always been innovative and always figured out ways to feed their children, to feed their families, um, to help support their husband, to supplement income. But When it came to positions of ownership or power or, you know, decision makers, when you get into the arenas of exposure, you don't know the number of women that you see is far as fewer and fewer. So, you know, with myself having two daughters myself, it's just important that you see, you know, women in positions of leadership and power. And, and, and once you go to school, like you said, unfortunately, you know, be, be it cultural reasons or what religious reasons or whatever, um, oftentimes once they get to the level in academia where it requires a degree or you need startup money, often women don't go for, or there aren't a lot of resources for women or they just don't understand that there are resources. So the fact that you have yeah. a company that's reaching out to those women and, and showing them that, hey, you can actually formalize this um, instead of, you know, the informal way of just going and selling some items. You can actually formalize this into a business. I think it's absolutely amazing. Um, you know, I'm all for girl power and <laughs> women supporting women. So this is great. So this is kind of the history of how she found, which I love the name, by the way, um, got started. I would love to go into you have now helped over 200 women. Um, I would love to go into, you know, what what exactly are the different departments and she found. So I know there's departments for women who are interested in being entrepreneurs. And then there's programs for women who are entrepreneurs that need some more support. Could you talk a little bit about um, exactly how you support women that are wanting to start their own businesses or to find resources for their businesses? Um, one of the things that we really had to scout, I'll start from a little bit far, one of the things that we really had to do was to look at the loopholes that are already existing within the support system that is there to support women entrepreneurs, specifically in Tanzania. Because first, we didn't want to duplicate efforts. Second, we really wanted to bring the value that we believe we sh- should bring in the first place. Um, so we, 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 we chose the areas that we're going to focus on, one of which is advocacy that cuts across. It doesn't matter how many people are doing it. It still needed to be there. It still needs to be there. Um, the other thing is uh, learning. Um, so this goes directly to the entrepreneurs, the female entrepreneur, learning about personal development and business development. Personal development is simply because the rule of the lead is real, right? Um, I know there's this common theme in our African families. If a child is bad, is a mama's child. And if the child is good, is a father's child. Like uh, in Swahili, Utaskia, Mr. Somebody's daughter or son. So, um, but in reality, when it comes to business, institutions, even family, the rule of the lead is real. Um, the, the bigger the, the leader is exposed, the higher the leader can think, the better the leader can communicate, can handle pressure, can do that, can do that, the better everything else goes. You will never find a company that whose vision and impact is bigger than the vision of the leader themselves. So that's why we focus on the personal part of the entrepreneur. Then getting out of their own shells, out of their own comfort zone, out of the fear of losing everything, helping them understand that, hey, you can have it all, but the reality of life is that you can't have it all in one season. So we need to help you prioritize to know when, because I'm a young mother. I have a a three-year-old turning four very soon toddler. So I know when to sleep in the office and when to just not come to the office at all. And then the business point of view now, it's, it, we have seen it from statistics to, to the, the most working with women entrepreneurs. They have, um, they have this 
phenomenal thinking of where they want to take their business. They have been sustaining these businesses for long, but some of them reach a level where, like just of recent, uh, there's a woman who's, whose ability to, the market needs more from her, but she doesn't have the capital to provide more, right? Okay, so we can take you to some of the people who can match you with, um, with investors, or we can take you to the banks and advocate for you. Um, to give us your books. They're like, okay, so what I know is, I make this, this profit when I sell this amount of metric ton. And I'm like, that's not going to work with anybody. If they're going to give you 150K USD, you need you to have your book straight, right? right? And then most of them uh, are like one woman show, which is good when you, you're starting a business. But for a business to grow, that strain of running everything constrains the business to grow. And if you have other social responsibility, it's even tougher, right? right. So they'll say, um, they'll say we're, we're struggling with with making a team, how do I choose the right team? I can, I can testify, I have really struggled with one of my favorite and still existing startup, I travel at, when it comes to building a team, mm -hmm. right? So, so there are all those kind of challenges. So it's important for them to understand the basics, the needs and greets to learn from those who are entrepreneurs already and then from the principles of running a business and developing one. And the other block is growth. So some of the challenges that we have seen is the women entrepreneurs that have a good support system. Like when we, take, when we say good support system, not necessarily within the innovation ecosystem or the entrepreneurship ecosystem, system but their social lives the husbands are supportive of them or their families are are supportive they can stay with the kids they can put in money they can buy products from them they can advertise for them their businesses are booming very fast so how can we create a conducive system for those who actually can't afford to have that right either they they have a very well coordinated a system behind them or families behind them or their single uh, parents or they're just students trying to figure, <laughs> figure life out. So um, part of the growth is linking them with people who can give them technical support or giving them technical support on our own. So we hack these things with them. And the last part is market access. I give an example of the entrepreneur that just recently, just of last week, um, I was talking to her and I talked to her this Sunday. She's like, literally people are calling me and I have market access, but I don't have the capital. Others are like, when you look at her business, it has a potential of being a, I don't know, a million dollar a business industry. We have one of the entrepreneurs who has a natural, um, natural hair care line, like it's amazing. Uh, it's called Rebo Naturals. Her business can expand beyond Tanzania, but she didn't know that, right? And she doesn't know how to access the market outside. Yes, she uses, she has an e-commerce website. She uses Instagram, but th there's more than that when it comes to business, especially e-commerce and expanding to that. So we, we're really looking at that. Now, going to the question of how do we support those who are aspiring, uh, one is just enticing and, 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 and sitting with them. Tell me what do you have in mind? Um, can we twist it like this? Can we be honest that this, this idea is good, but business-wise, it doesn't make sense, right? Mm -hmm. And so things, different things like that, then working with them thoroughly through different processes and different stages to be able to take them to a place where they can have MVPs, minimum viable product, or link them to the people that can have, um, can help them build MVP. And we're really, at the moment, we're really capitalizing on strategic partnership because we're still a young NGO, although we're really trying to do 
the best we can. Um, we're currently also fundraising, so we can be able to support the entrepreneurs very well. Uh, but also another way now we work with the blooms. With the blooms, it's it's um, I must say it's much easier. So investing in in the aspiring stuff it needs resources because you're taking an idea to MVP to it's it's a lot of muscle that's needed to get there. But with the blooms, it's easy because now they already have a product. They already some of them have already run their business for three years, four years, one year. So you go with them slowly, iterating their models, iterating their products, helping them test new products, um, helping them find a way they can source funds without going to the banks because one of the toughest thing that we've realized um, is access from fin financials from banks. Like you need collateral and all that. And most of these women don't have that. Um, so how can you have other sources of funding? How can you utilize things like Michezo? So this is where a group of women or just a group of people uh, give out, let's say, 100K every week to each other. So this week, if we're 10 or we're 5, we all contribute 100 and this money goes to one person. The next week goes to another. Next week, how can you utilize such systems to self-finance, to take your business to, to, to another level? So that's how we work with them. Um, and we, we really, uh, one of the things that we established was something we call Business Hack Series, where we dive into different building blocks of a business now. Instead of, um, we started with, general um, workshops, let's say we, we do customer discovery with a lot of entrepreneurs, but now we're really niching down that we have this specifically niched down or knitted um, personalized sessions. We work with the entrepreneurs and the entrepreneurs, they ask each other questions, they, they support each other, they exchange values with each other, and then we go through the neat grid on how do they get their customers? Uh, what are the challenges do they see? Do they really think they're serving the right group? Because some of them will realize they have this, um, they want to serve this market, but their product speaks to another market. So when you go to, to this market, it's like speaking gibberish. To an adult, like they won't, they won't understand. Only kids will, right? So we, we work through with them through different different building blocks and um, giving them assignments that turn into KPIs that they answer to um, monthly, weekly. I love some of them, like one of them just texted me today, what's up? Hey, Vanessa, I know you're busy, but just to update you, you're supposed to send us an assignment for this week. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, it, it, it's good seeing these businesses thrive, honestly. I'm really, I'm really hopeful to, to say uh, we have um, Tanzanian female-led unicorn one day, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. So one thing that um, we always know is a big challenge is securing financing for, you know, your business investments or for your, your business. And as we know, especially on the continent of Africa and in Tanzania specifically, um, you know, going to a bank to get capital is, is not something that's really a viable resource, well, you know. Yeah, loans aren't really, business loans aren't really a um, thing there. It doesn't really happen. So if, People in one, one of the things that um, I am building my community to be um, is a community of empowering and supporting of people in the business world, entrepreneurs. So with your organization, you know, that's exactly what you do. And I know one of the biggest challenges is securing capital. So if people in my community yeah. would like to contribute um, capital or financing to some people in your organization, how would they go about doing that? Like, can a foreigner from America, I have followers from India, from the UK, from Canada, from all over the world. So if they wanted to contribute to these entrepreneurs in Tanzania. Um, what would be a way for them to go about doing that? Okay, perfect. First, they're welcome. 
<laughs> Second, um, so there are two ways directly relating to she found, right? Um, one is through grants, because one of the things that we, we actually do is support these women directly. So putting in the donation for the, for the, for the, um, um, for the organization helps, helps the organization support better the entrepreneurs, but also it's easy for us to say um, within the grants that we got this year, there's this money, uh, that there's 10k that we can distribute 1,000, 1,000 to 10 to 10 businesses that we we see that need the funding and they can use it, right? And um, being that we're a nonprofit organization, we can definitely explain that that's one of the ways we support the entrepreneurs. Um, the other way is through us partnering with fund managers here in Tanzania. So whether it's accelerators or investment firms or banks that support the entrepreneurs and then the, the contribution goes to um, goes to the fund manager and we work with the entrepreneurs and every time the entrepreneurs need the funding, they get directly from there. So those are the two easiest things, uh, easiest ways I can think out from the top of my mind. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I know some of the questions I'll have would be, you know, how do we support these women? Cause I think that's very important. And um, I think it's wonderful for us to be able to do to, in order to, you know, reach out and help somebody and give somebody a hand, um, up, I always say not a hand out because these women are yeah. very hardworking. They're very intelligent. Um, yeah. They understand where they're going. They just need a little bit of help. So I think that's um, wonderful for and, them to have access to that. Mm, mm, mm. And also understanding that it's it's definitely not a hand out. Uh, supporting just a statistically supporting a female entrepreneur in Africa means supporting almost five people within a family. And that's just, that's, that's a lot. Um, but also when you really look at the numbers, uh, because of most of this, almost 74% of this um, SMEs, female-led SMEs don't mature into bigger businesses, the continent loses almost 125 million US dollars of GDP every year. Like that's just, that's a lot. Right? Yes, that's yes. a lot. And given that the continent depends on agriculture and these small businesses, and 54% of the small businesses are women led or women owned, that should tell you a lot of why supporting the growth of these businesses means not just to the community within which we operate at the moment, but what means to the to the continent. Um, as African continent, but also what will mean to the world. Imagining if Africa's GDP increases to just 50 US dollars um, million every year, just taking off burdens from some of the people, right, um, within the African community and really helping the generation here just grow into a much more productive, um, lively uh, livelihood. So, yeah. I agree a hundred percent. Um, you know, you support, they always say anywhere in the world, if you support a woman, especially a mother and a wife, um, you are then, you know, supporting the entire village because, you know, when women have more access to resources and to capital and to exposure and education themselves, they tend to always, that trickles down to their children and their children's yes. children. Yes. So, um, you know, that's why supporting women is very important because, um, as mothers, we always will take our resources and pass it down to our children. So um, I 100% agree with that. So what is next um, before we finish up? I would love to hear what are what's your vision or what is next for She Found? Ooh, okay. Uh, <laughs> that's a tough one. Uh, that's a tough one because first at the moment at a personal level, I'm also in transitioning. So given that I'm still, I'm still running uh, my startup and all that, but uh, given that she found is now an entity and, and, and the workload with working with women is really increasing. My ability to be a mother, an entrepreneur, an employee, 
and the co-founder is not working anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been transitioning officially um, from Sahara, which is my baby. Like Sahara Sparks is is my baby, <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna let her go. And uh, fully commit to she found. So that's that's at the personal level. That's the that's the stage I'm in at the moment. Uh, with she found uh, one of the things that is really next. Um, it's deepening in into personalized uh, sort of um, programs for the women entrepreneurs, and we're really looking forward to now making them available online so they can have access to them at any time and not just the women entrepreneurs that are in Tanzania and they can physically access us, but the women entrepreneurs from across the emerging markets because that's that's the target that we really want to target. Um, we have She Found Business Hub uh, uh, publication, it's on Medium, so we publish a lot of content for female entrepreneurs and the she found youtube channel and those are some of the things that we'll, we will be utilizing a lot but also we're building a community at the moment so where these women can have much more personalized content much more personalized resources and tools that we're building for them but of course being that we're also transitioning we're um we're getting we're getting we're getting into fundraising to move to our new offices and have a new place where entrepreneurs can freely come and work, um, even if it's working throughout a day there, because here at the moment we're, um, we're being hosted at Sahara Accelerator Space, so it's not easy to get the entrepreneurs 24-7 with us, right. um, but yeah. And, um, and of course, we have had a couple of partnerships that we're looking forward to working with in, uh, for next month, but we're also welcome for other partners to work with us. And yes, um, looking forward to, uh, we're also going to rural areas, by the way. So we're, we're looking for partnerships within um, semi-urban first in, within Tanzania. So we're expecting to go to Tanga, to Arusha, um, to Zanzibar and see how can we expand a little bit of what we do uh, working with, uh, with partners that are already working with entrepreneurs there in those regions. So yeah, it's, a, it's exciting for, for us. Um, let's see where that goes. <laughs> you know, I think that's going to be um, something that's going to be very beneficial to this organization because that is where you find a lot of micro entrepreneurs and women that have their shops and you know, they just need a little bit of support. Um, but I would like to remind everybody for she found yeah. that, you know, they have two ways of supporting these women right now where you can um, directly donate to she found and then they can use grants or they can use that means of helping the women that are currently in their program. And then you can also partner. Sounds like they're looking for partners as well. So if you're interested in partnering with She Found, um, keep that in mind as well as they want to expand and grow and be able to reach as many women as possible, um, which is one of the reasons why I was so excited to feature them today on this episode, because um, this organization has so much potential and um, is doing a lot for the community um, that is not always seen and not always, I don't want to say value, but you know, you don't always see how much of um, a contribution you're making when you are supporting these women. Um, so this is going to be something that I think is going to be longstanding and an organization that we would love to see blossom and grow and prosper and do uh, all types of amazing things through supporting um, all of these businesses. So yeah. I can't imagine where it's going to be anywhere from one year to five years from now that it, with um, getting the word out and letting the, the, the world know, hey, here's an organization that you should put your money into. I'm really, I'm really excited. And we're also excited to see what's going to happen in the next one to five years. We also don't know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, Vanessa, I want to thank you so, so much for coming on today. Um, it has been 
an absolute joy and pleasure to get to know um, not only you, but just what your organization does and um, all the ways that we can help you and all the things that you're doing to help others. So um, I want to just thank you so much for that. And also, you know, we look forward to speaking to you maybe next year and seeing where you have, where you, things have led you in the past 12 months. <laughs> and as always, Vanessa's information and her organization is along the bottom. So you have no problems in being able to find where you can reach out to her and how you can help to support her organization, She Found. And I just want to thank you again for joining us today. And I look forward to seeing you very soon in the very near future. Thank you so much, Ebony, for having me. Um, it's, I've been humbled and honored. And I'm glad that I've been able to share a little bit of what we do, a little bit of me, um, and much more of the women entrepreneurs that we work with. I really, I really am looking forward to seeing what more we can do and what more we're going to do. And of course, with everybody else who is going to get in board, which... I'm choosing to believe I'll get a few people getting on board with this. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I agree. I think this is going to see um, some amazing returns. And I think this is going to be something that is just going to be very prosperous and um, fruitful. So this is episode four of Excellence with Ebony. Thank you guys so much for joining. Don't forget to check out She Found website. All the information is right here on the screen. And I hope that you find it in your heart to support and that you've been inspired today and um, that we will see Vanessa's organization um, grow leaps and bounds over the next six to 12 months. Thank you guys again for joining. And until our next episode, this is episode four of Excellence with Ebony. Thank you.